As you can see in the title, it's a homemade x-ray tube. And it's not just homemade, it's basically made from scratch. I used bow silicate glass like test tubes and glass doors, tungsten welding electrodes for the glass to match the seals, some metal parts I had laying around like this copper cylinder here, um, a titanium getter, so I needed a titanium strip, by, but I will come to it later, and my tools were just an oxypropane burner, uh, you need um, some some burner like uh, <laughs> like this to, to melt both silicate glass, because in comparison to like solar lime glass, it has a higher melting point and definite, definitely need uh, oxygen. And I also used a blowtorch to preheat it and a bit for annealing the parts. I also used a spot welder to connect iron wire to the tungsten. You can, for example, not bend tungsten, it will break. And of course you need a pump. And in my case it was a two-stage rotary pump. And as you can see in the ratings, um, the ultimate vacuum is about 0.003 millibars. Um, it's pretty low. Um, and it's about the maximum you can get with such, such um, mechanical pumps. Um, normally you use um, like diffusion pumps or turbomolecular pumps, um, but I don't have it and I also don't need it. But uh, yeah, and some, the most important tool is of course patience. It, it was not the first attempt here. Um, I show you um, some more attempts, like um, here, this was a vacuum tube without a getter, and um, this tube uh, stained, <laughs> it also didn't work, um, uh, it kind of worked, but it, it stained and there was air inside and, uh, and, and it cracked also. So my tube is a hot cathode x-ray tube. And it means it uses thermionic emission of thoriated tungsten wire. Um, you can also see a Venet cylinder here. It's um, to help focusing the electron beam uh, onto the target here. It's a copper target and yeah. One more thing is um, I already mentioned the getter. And the getter is here, it's, it's this shiny part, and it's basically mm, condensed um, titanium. So uh, inside here is a titanium wire. I, sh I show you this tube here, it's, n it's not um, evaporated yet. and. Here you can see um, it looks like a filament, but the material is titanium. And you heat it with a current um, through, through the pins and it gets hot and it evaporates. And the evaporated titanium um, condenses on cooler parts like the tube. And what it does is it chemically catches oxygen and nitrogen and of course if you catch um, molecules out of the residual gas they are stuck on the walls and they are not inside the tube anymore so the vacuum gets better gets better gets better and so on and this was my trick to um, here. Um, it was my trick to avoid um, an expensive pump like turbo molecular pumps or even some uh, they are uh, like diffusion pumps are also a bit dangerous um, like if the oil starts to burn um, if spontaneously air comes in it 
resulted in such a good vacuum that I was able to apply like 20 kilowatts on a gap of about 1 centimeter between the anode and the cathode without triggering a gas discharge like in cold cathode tubes. Um, I also made a, ca a cold cathode tube and I can show it here. That's my cold cathode tube and there is some air in it and it definitely is needed to um, having free um, ions. So uh, without it, it's, there can no current flow through it. Uh, the difference between this here and here is um, you can kind of set the current by uh, the filament voltage. Um, like I said, it's therm thermionic emission and the hotter it, the cathode gets, the more electrons are boiled off and the more electrons uh, flow through the tube. So the more electrons you accelerate onto the target. And here it's it's different. Um, you apply a voltage and it's basically it. So you can rise the voltage, rise it and rise it and you will notice at a certain voltage it triggers and a current flows. And um, it behaves a bit like a um, Zener diode. So a Zener diode, of course it's compli it's more complicated, but to keep it easy, uh, a Zener diode, uh, you apply a voltage, it rises, it rises, and at a certain point you will have a current. And if you try to rise the voltage more, you just have more current through it. And it was really a problem back then um, when they used cold cathode tubes um, for x-rays in like medical uh, whatever. And, and that's why um, tu the tubes back then had some refresher. But it was not perfect. And then like in 19... 1900, they switched over to thermionic emission um, because um, you want for radiological images um, you want one specific voltage and not a fluctuating like in cold cathode tubes. So, but now enough talk. Now I will show you what I was able to manage to get out of it. We turn off the lights and I will activate my multimeter. Um, of course we need um, some high voltage. Let's activate it. You can already hear it. And now, oh, we need a Geiger counter. Let's use this famous one. And you can hear it in the background. Now I will turn on uh, the filament voltage. So about 5 amps. And yeah, you see it glowing. When I turn it off, nothing. That's it. I hope you liked my video and I even more hope that you got some interest in this topic. And if you want, I will go more into detail on cold cathode tubes next time. So, see you later and bye.